Hello viewers, so welcome to my channel. I'm Hashem Ali Khan. So already three videos I have completed on introduction to income tax. This is the fourth and last video. Next video I will start the problems on income tax, calculation of tax liability. So in the previous three videos I have explained you the meaning of the term tax, then characteristic features of tax, classification of tax, types of different taxes, canons of taxation. I have explained about the basic concepts, terms which are frequently used in income tax like SSC previous year, then income person, assessment year, all the terms I have explained. Apart from that deemed income and exceptions to the general rule, then slab rates and flat rate, all these things I have explained in the last three videos. In this video, I am going to explain you the other provisions regarding the tax rates. What are the different tax rates, slab rates and uh, flat rate for casual income, special income and normal income. So after this, we'll start the problem. If you want the perfect knowledge, my suggestion, don't skip in between. The initial three, four videos are very, very important because until and unless you know the provisions of income tax, you cannot solve the problems. Every problem will be very difficult for you if you do not understand the theory. So watch this video till the end and very important video. So before explaining the provisions, take a screenshot of the points which I have written on the board. Then I'll explain all the points in detail. Come on. First of all, <clears throat> I'm starting with the slab rates. Previous video, I explained you there are two types of rates, flat rate and slab rate. For, in, for some incomes, there is a flat rate. In the previous video, I have explained you flat rate is a single rate which is applied on the, all the incomes, total income. Whatever is the income, only one rate will be applied that is called flat rate. Some incomes, we apply flat rate. For other incomes, we apply slab rates. Slab rates means the total income will be divided into different parts or different slabs. For each slab, a different rate of tax will be applied. For different parts of income, different rates of tax will be applied. That is called slab system. So uh, see carefully here, slab rate. Under this, the taxable income is divided into different parts known as slabs. And each part or slab of income is taxed with a different rate of tax. Just now I told you. For example, if a person's income is 10 lakh. So we divide the 10 lakh into three parts. First part up to 2 lakh 50,000. Second part up to 5 lakh. Third part up to 10 lakh. That means the 10 lakh rupees total income is divided into three parts. The first part from 1 rupee to 2 lakh 50,000. Second part from 2 lakh 50,000, 1 to 5 lakh. This is the second slab. Third slab from 5 lakh, 1 to 10 lakh. So we have different rates of tax for different slab of incomes. That is called a slab system. Now, all incomes other than casual incomes and special incomes are applied slab rates. Two incomes we have to leave. Those two incomes are casual incomes and special incomes. Leaving these two incomes, all other incomes will be applied slab rates. Slab rates. Now, casual income. First of all, very frequently in examination, a question will be asked, what is casual income and what are the provisions of taxability of casual incomes? First of all, the meaning of casual income. An income which is earned with an element of chance income earned with an element of chance or unexpected income not expected unexpected income non-recurring income that is called casual incomes so when an income is earned due to an element of chance then such income is known as casual incomes so incomes from horse races now i am giving the examples of casual incomes few examples of horse races winning from horse races Winning from lotteries, crossword puzzles, 
card games, gambling and betting, winning from TV programs or lucky dips conducted by business establishments are few examples of casual incomes. The best example of casual income is winning from lottery, winning from horse races, then card games, puzzles, betting, gambling, TV programs or a lucky dip drawn by business establishments etc. These are the examples of casual incomes. This is the meaning and examples. Now what is the taxability? What are the provisions of Income Tax Act regarding the taxability of casual income? So it is given these incomes are taxed at a flat rate of 30%. Remember this. That's why I told you this video is very important because all provisions are discussed. When we do the problem, these provisions will apply. So casual incomes are taxed at a flat rate of 30% plus surcharge plus health and education says if there is surcharge we apply otherwise surcharge will not be there directly we apply health and education says health and education says is mandatory whereas surcharge depends on income up to 50 lakh rupees total income no surcharge if the total income of the SSC is more than 50 lakh but up to 1 crore 10% is the rate of surcharge. If the income is more than 1, one crore but up to 2 crore, <coughs> up to 2 crore, 15% is the rate of surcharge. If the income is more than 2 crore up to 5 crore, up to 5 crore, 25% is the surcharge. If the total income is more than 5 crore, the surcharge is 37%. Already in the last video I have explained. So up to 50 lakh rupees if total income is there, no surcharge will be applied. Next, for cash, some notes you have to remember regarding casual incomes. Some important note. First note, for casual incomes, no basic exemption is allowed. Basic exemption is allowed only for normal income and special incomes. From casual incomes, no basic exemption. Secondly, for casual incomes, no tax rebate under section 87A. For uh, calculating the tax rebate under uh, section 87A, casual income should not be considered or tax rebate cannot be deducted from casual incomes. Then if casual income is less than 10,000, no TDS is applied. Income Tax Act says whenever casual income arises, the issuing authority has to deduct the tax. For example, if you won a lottery prize of 1 lakh, so directly 1 lakh rupees will not be issued by the authorities. According to the provision, from 1 lakh rupees, 30% tax is deducted, only 70,000 rupees will be given to you, net amount, after deducting TDS, that is a provision of Income Tax Act. But if the casual income is up to 10,000 rupees, no TDS will be made complete 10,000 rupees will be given to the winner, to the SSC. The SSC has to pay the tax. But if the casual income is more than 10,000, then TDS has to be made by the issuing authority and the net amount will be given to the winner. These are the provisions. Now special incomes. I have explained about casual incomes. Now I have explained about special incomes. Special incomes are those incomes on which a flat rate or concessional rate or lower rate of tax is applied. A flat rate will be applied. So what are the examples of special incomes? Now special incomes are taxed at concessional or lower rate of tax. These incomes are taxed at a flat rate. Now the basic exemption is allowed from these incomes. So remember basic exemption is not allowed from casual incomes. But basic exemption is allowed from special incomes. So example of these special incomes are STCG, short term capital gain on transfer of equity shares and equity units of equity oriented of mutual funds. So income tax act says short term capital gain arising on the transfer of equity shares. If a person is the holder, if the SSC is the holder of equity shares, during the previous year he sold the equity shares and earned a short term capital gain, earned a short term capital gain or he sold units of mutual fund, equity oriented units, remember the wording, 
equity oriented units of mutual fund if a person has earned the income from these two transfer of equity shares and transfer of transfer of equity oriented units of mutual fund then the income is taxed at a flat rate of 15% now then ltcg on other assets long term capital gain on other assets are taxed at a flat rate of 20% then long term capital gain on equity shares and units of equity oriented mutual funds if stt stt stands for security transaction tax whenever a transaction is conducted in a stock exchange then stt has to be paid security transaction tax has to be paid if an ssc got a long term capital gain got a long term capital gain on transfer of equity shares or equity oriented units of mutual fund and if stt is paid security transaction tax is paid up to 10 lakh rupees is exempted up to 10 lakh rupees is exempted over 10 lakh rupees is taxed at a flat rate of 10% so <coughs> remember the provisions short term capital gain on transfer of equity shares and equity oriented units of mutual fund that is taxed at a flat rate of 15% long term other long term capital gains taxed at 20% long term capital gain on transfer of equity shares and equity oriented units of mutual fund if stt is paid security transaction tax is paid then up to 10 lakh rupees exempted over 10 lakh rupees capital gain is taxed at a flat rate of 10% now short term capital gain these are the explanation about casual incomes and special incomes now short term capital gain what is the taxability of short term capital gain short term capital gain on equity shares just now i told you 15% short term capital gain on transfer of equity shares or equity oriented units of mutual fund is taxable at a flat rate of 15% if stt is paid if ft stt is not paid 20% security transaction tax if not paid 20% So short term capital gain on equity shares and equity oriented units of mutual fund if stt is not paid 20% stt paid 15% stt not paid 20% then short term capital gain on debt oriented mutual fund 20% in mutual funds we have different schemes equity oriented debt oriented for debt oriented mutual fund there is a cap short term capital gain 20% short term capital gain on other assets leaving this three any short term capital gain arising on any other asset will be taxable at slab system along with other incomes taxable at a slab system along with other incomes like income from salary income from house property income from other sources all other income short term capital gain will also be included and taxed at slab system these are the provisions regarding short term no long term capital gain ltcg what is this ltcg what is this stcg i'll explain in the coming videos but right now only terms you remember short term capital gain stcg long term capital gain ltcg so long term capital gain on equity shares and equity oriented units of mutual fund if stt is paid 10% on gains in excess of 10 lakh rupees just now i told you up to 10 lakh rupees ltcg is exempted over 10 lakh rupees ltcg is taxable at 10% flat rate if stt is paid now ltcg on other assets 20% leaving this first all other long term capital gain is taxed at a flat rate of 20% so while computing the total income for casual income and ltcg no deduction is available under section 80c to 80u so deductions are not allowed from casual incomes and from ltcg that's it so these are the provisions regarding stcg and ltcg now last and final point that is tax on normal income we have discussed about the tax on casual income and we have discussed about the tax on special incomes not tax on normal income what is normal income any income which is neither casual income 
nor special income. Leaving these two, all other incomes are called normal income. So an income which cannot be treated as casual income and special income is considered as normal income. For normal incomes, basic exemption is given and the aggregate of all heads of income is taxed on slab basis. Income tax is not charged separately on every head. We add up all the heads, combine together, find out the total income. On that total income, normal tax rates will apply. The tax rates applicable to an SSC whose status is individual. We know there are different persons from income tax point of view. Individual, Hindu undivided family, partnership firm, joint stock company or uh, association of persons, body of individuals. So many persons are there. But our concentration is only on individual. We are not discussing about the provisions of HUEF for company or firm. Only individual. So for current assessment year, which is the current assessment year? 21-22. Remember this. 21-22 is the current assessment year. So what are the different slab rates for individual? Here I have shown. First one, three categories are there. Three category of SSCs. The first category, non-senior citizen. A person is called non-senior citizen if he is under the age of 60. Under the age of 60, he is called non-senior. Senior citizen, 60 and above but below 80 60 years and above but below 80 he will be called senior citizen if an ssc is 80 years or above he will be called super senior citizen so tax rates will be different for non senior senior and super senior so first we discuss about non senior citizen whose age is below 60 years right for male as well as female no separate provisions uh, depending on gender all males and females same rate of tax will apply so non-senior citizen resident age below 60 years so what is a, a slab first 250000 nil the basic exemption limit of non-senior is 250000 up to 250000 nil no tax the next slab starts from 250000 1 to 5 lakh up to 5 lakh. Second slab. 2 lakh 50,000, 1 to 5 lakh. The tax rate is 5%. Third slab. 5 lakh 1 to 10 lakh rupees. 5 lakh 1 to 10 lakh rupees. Third slab. 20% is the rate of tax. Over 10 lakh rupees. Over 10 lakh rupees, whatever be your income, it is taxed at 30%. So four rates are given. 0%. 20 percent, uh, 10 percent, sorry, 0%, 5%, 20%, 30%. There is no 10%. 0, 5, 20, 30%. 0% up to 2,50,000. No tax. From 2,50,000, 1 to 5 lakh, 5% 5 is the rate of tax. From 5 lakh, 1 to 10 lakh, 20% is the rate of tax. Over 10 lakh, 30% is the rate of tax. This is applicable for non-senior under 60 years now second uh, senior citizen when a person is called senior citizen 60 years or above but below 80 years 60 and above but below 80 years he is called senior citizen so the slab system again four slabs are there first up to 3 lakh basic exemption is 3 lakh for senior citizen here it was 2 lakh 50 thousand that is the only difference. So first 3 lakh nil, no tax. Second slab goes from 3 lakh 1 rupee to 5 lakh. It is 5%. 3 lakh 1 to 5 lakh, 5%. Then 5 lakh 1 to 10 lakh, 20%. Last one over 10 lakh rupees, 30%. That's all. This is the second case. Now super senior citizen. Super senior citizen means a person whose age is 80 years and above. 80 and above are called super senior. The slab rates are only three slab rates. First 5 lakh. First 5 lakh nil. Because basic exemption limit for super senior citizen is 5 lakh. 
up to 5 lakh no tax nil then second slab 5 lakh 1 to 10 lakh 20% there is no 5% rate slab in super senior 5% slab is there for non senior and senior super senior no 5% 0, 20%, 30%. Up to 5 lakh rupees, nil. 5 lakh, 1 to 10 lakh, 20%. Over 10 lakh rupees, 30%. These are called the normal rates of tax. In the coming problem, I am going to apply this. And next one is income tax. How to calculate income tax? First, uh, income tax due and income tax liability. Income tax, first we calculate the total income tax. To this, we add the surcharge, if any. If applicable, then we add surcharge plus health and education says the three items we have calculated income tax plus surcharge plus health and education says will get the tax liability from tax liability deduct the TDS and deduct the advance tax paid. We will get the tax due. Suppose if TDS and advance tax paid is more than tax liability refund of tax. Example, the tax liability comes to 2 lakh rupees, whereas TDS and advance tax paid is 2 lakh 50,000. The SSC has already paid 2 lakh 50,000, but its tax comes to only 2 lakh. So 50,000 rupees will be refund of tax. Will be refund of tax. That's all. So in this video, I have explained you the different tax rates applicable on casual income on special incomes and on normal incomes this is very very important watch this video not once twice thrice then only easily you can solve the problem otherwise problems will be very very difficult so inshallah in the next video i'll start the problems problems on calculation of tax liability